I'm Vice Mayor Steve Kay, and I'm here today with Crystal Wilkinson and Ron Davis, who are partners and proprietors in Wild Fig Book and Coffee. And I'm really excited to be here with you folks. I appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to start by just asking either one of you to start, tell me a little bit about the move. How did you end up here? How's that, how's that been going? Well, we had been at the other store for the, the Middlethorpe location for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up closing in February. And we wanted to open another store, but we weren't sure. And then when this opportunity here on North Lawn came, uh, we jumped on it and um, have been really excited about this beautiful new space. Okay, and um, coming out to, to what's now being called No Lie, um, uh -huh. is that a part of what attracted you? or just there was a, the right space was available? Well, we were, uh, I think, attracted to the, the energy here, wouldn't you say, Ron? That we yeah, I think it was a combination of both. Uh, the, the right time and for a lot of the people who came into the old location, uh, we were able to just ask them you know, various questions. They would always say, I wish we had a bookstore in, in our neighborhood. A lot of those folks lived in this area. They're always like, I live around North Lyme. So, you know, location plays a big part, you know, in what you want to do. So, right. So that, that helped, you know, knowing that there were people already here wanting us. Okay. And the name Wild Fig, I'm curious. Is, well, it, is this, this is, <laughs> he's gesturing to you, so this is yours. Yeah, it, well, it's a, a lit question, I guess, a, a writing question, even though he's a writer too. But one of my favorite writers is Gail Jones, um, who's a native of Kentucky and native of Lexington and she has a poem called Wild Fig in Secret Places. So um, thus the wild fig. Um, she actually lives in this neighborhood too so we we're oh. really excited. Well that's neat. Yeah. So she does she come in and, and no. she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she is um, I think wonderfully secreted away and, and sort of a recluse but we respect her work a lot. We're gonna honor her birthday uh, this month and read from her work. We would love it if she came through the doors. Okay. <laughs> so is there a difference in what you're doing here and what you were able to do when you were over in Metal Thought? Yes, we've expanded to where we're um, having mostly new books now. We've got um, some, some of our used books, so we hope that people who've been here before will sort of see something familiar when they come in and see a combination of used and new books. And we also have boutique items, we have t-shirts, we have socks, flask, uh, uh, all kinds of things. Cafe. And, and the cafe, most especially. Yeah. Okay. And how is, how's the cafe been going? It's been going great. We're, you know, serving up lattes and coffee and all, uh, literary drinks. I think that's been our best seller. Literary, so <laughs> say a little bit more about that. Well, what's, we what's a literary a drink? A literary drink. We have three smoothies, specialty smoothies, that are named after a Kentucky writer. So we have the Tropa Gale. <laughs> named after Gail Jones. We have the Wendell Berry, so it speaks for itself. Um, and we have the Divine Rights Sip that's named for a book by Bernie Norman. Right. So uh, we're hoping the next uh, couple of weeks to add literary sandwiches as well. Literary sandwiches. So, <laughs> so do you have some names already in mind? We well, we're keeping those a secret. To okay. Be honest, but we 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 don't have. We okay. Well, we want to do an Ed uh, and uh, something that's an ode to Ed McClanahan. So there will be something in the coming weeks called Captain Kentucky. Captain Kentucky. Ah. Uh, but we're that, not sure okay. whether it's going to be a drink or. A okay. Sandwich. Great. And do you both do the same things here, Ron? What, what, what's your main responsibility? Whatever she tells me to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm more just an overall manager, uh, muscle from time to time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we're equal partners in this. It's, you know, smile and greet people and, uh, you know, make the place look good. That's well, Ron is being uh, very... Uh, 
humble. He he is primarily the one who's usually here as far as someone here in charge because I still teach. So um, he's here seven days a week and he's the main curator of the books at deciding uh, what sort of the quirky, eclectic, wonderful literary books that we're mm. getting in. So. Okay. When, you, when, when Chris says quirky books or interesting <laughs> books, what are the kinds of things you're most interested in uh, or you like to have for, this, for the store? All right. Well, when we reopened the store, um, and this is just an example, Wild Fig Books had closed in February. So the intent was not to even use that name again. Uh, so we were looking for other names to call the bookstore that will reopen in this area. And uh, this shirt represents... Uh, Behind the Proust Face Killer is the name of the bookstore I wanted to have. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came up with the design of Marcel Proust in a you know baseball cap, uh, and it just combines uh, you know hip hop elements with uh, literary elements. And yeah. So the French philosopher Marcel Proust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of a mashup um, of uh, Ghost Face Killer's a, uh, a his, pers yeah, his persona. So it was just. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm all over the place. I, personally, I like uh, you know magical realism and graphic novels and uh, art books. Uh, I probably only have fiction because it's Crystal. <laughs> uh, I tried to order books that were heavy in nonfiction or art, and she'll say, "Well, you know that you know uh, Margaret Atwood just had a new book come out. Where is that <laughs> book?" You know, <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, all right." All right. Yeah, so we're going for a different, um, we won't necessarily, uh, we'll have it, of course, if someone requests it, you can always order anything from us and we'll get it in two or three days. Uh, but we won't necessarily be the place where you come and get your top ten bestsellers. We really want to offer something, something more than that. And we, we offer uh, a lot of readings by uh, local and national uh, mm -hmm. writers. Mm -hmm. We just had a, a huge celebration here uh, last night for Ada Lamon, uh, who was just nominated for the 2015 um, National Book Award. And she's a faculty member at UK, is that correct? Um, I don't think she teaches at UK. I think she teaches there some, but I don't think she's officially on the faculty, but um, it was a wonderful uh, celebration, different than just a reading. Um, so we called it a speakeasy, and there was a party, and uh, yeah, we, had we had a, a DJ, DJ food truck in the front yard. It was it yeah, was nice. Ilios, um, okay. Taco Park was outside. It was it was a grand, and she read, of course, um, but it was just yeah. a, a grand celebration. Well, it's interesting. So there's a lot going on in that style at this in this part of the of the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do yeah. you do you? I mean, so I know about the night market. Mm -hmm. uh, when that happens, do you participate over there, or do you have people come in? I mean, do you get more traffic here? Does that make a difference for you? We do get yeah. more more traffic here, and we try to do something special for every night market. We sort of gear up for it. Like we've only been here since when we opened. Where when uh, six weeks? We've been yeah. here for two night markets. Yeah. Um, okay. And the first last one was. The previous one was rained out, and this one was yeah. overcast, so it was kind of, we haven't seen the full effects of a full night market yet. So uh, we want to use it more just to get our name out there, because a lot of people still don't know we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, we would love for people to come in and browse and get a feel for us. Um, and we get a lot of that, because a lot of people have to park and walk, and so when, when it's at night and the lights are on, you can really see, oh, this is, not a, not a residence anymore. This is a, yeah. A yeah. Business. During the day, people still think it's a house. They just don't see the sign. And uh, someone called yesterday and was like, "I think I've driven by twice, and I don't know where you are." Seventh <laughs> 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 and uh, Eddie uh, are off Lime Lime Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay. So I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a short break, and when we come back, I'm gonna ask. Uh, both of these talented people to read a little bit and talk a little bit more about their work as authors. Welcome back. We're now going to do a combination of art and commerce. We're standing in front of the board for the for the uh, coffee part of this shop, but I've asked both Crystal and Ron to choose something to read from their work. So 
Um, start, Crystal, say a little bit about what you're going to read and okay. share it. Um, I'm going to read just the opening paragraph from my new book, The Birds of Opulence, which will be out um, on March 6th of 2016. This is from a chapter called The Known Bird. Imagine a tree, a bird in the tree, the hills, the creek, a possum, the dog chasing the possum. Imagine yourself a woman who gathered stories in her apron. The sun peeped through the silver maples the day I was born. In the back field, one of old man Lucian's beagles cornered a possum. The dog snarled, pulled back on her haunches, and bit the possum's neck in hindquarters. The possum, bloody and scared, caught in the first streams of daylight, played dead. Up on the knob, mist burned off quickly into another hot day. Great. Thank you. We'll, what's it going to, the name of the book again and um, when's it coming it's out? It's called The Birds of Opulence yep. um, and it's coming out with University Press of Kentucky um, the first week in March of 2016. Great. I expect you'll have a little party here when yes, that comes we'll out. Yes, we'll have a grand, <laughs> a grand celebration of some kind. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for that. So, Ron, say a little bit about what you're going to read and uh, share it with us. I'm reading from uh, my book of poetry and art, uh, Call and Response. Um, it came out on uh, Argus House Press uh, back in June for the show. Okay. Uh, this poem is called Dirt Farmer. Uh, poem should live off the land, should hunt and kill, sink in its teeth into something with bigger teeth than it. Not bloodthirst, has nothing to do with hunting for fun, should not harbinger sociopaths under its similes. Poem should grow whole societies from a single cell from drops of, drops of blood from the shaved seed. Not that our verb should be against a cold-blooded kill. Reaping is at, at, t at times the best weapon sanitizing insanity. I'm just pontificating. Why no writer any longer tends trending toward the roots of black agricultural consciousness. I want poems that raises pigs before it grills them. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so anything else you need you'd like to tell us about shop, your work, before we kind of bring to this, this to a close. Well, we're at 726 North Lime. Yep. And uh, good books and good food. We hope people will come. <laughs> okay, Ron, anything? Last words? Anything to add? Uh, I'd like to have the last word, but I'm at a, <laughs> at a blank right now, so I'm good. Okay, <laughs> then I, I'm going to get the last word. Right. I'm glad that you've um, reopened and that you are part of what's reinvigorating the whole North Limestone, officially called No Lie, part of our community. It adds a lot, I think. So, and uh, thanks again for watching. And thanks to Crystal and Ron for being with us today. And remember to come by and visit the Wild Fig Books and Coffee. <laughs>